Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the formal definition of a derivative at a point. In the last video, we learned about the formal definition of a derivative, which says f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Remember, this gives us an equation, f prime of x, that allows us to calculate the derivative at any value of x. Now we're gonna learn about the formal definition of a derivative at a point, which says f prime of c equals the limit as x goes to c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. This gives us the value of f prime of x at a point x equals c. Let's look at a diagram and we're gonna see that it's just a variation on the formal definition of a derivative. So here's our graph. We're gonna start with the point c f of c. Then we have another point x f of x. We want to find the derivative at the point x equals c. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope of the secant line that connects the two points, and we're going to take the limit as x approaches c. Since we're taking the limit as x approaches c, x moves closer and closer to c, so our secant line becomes a tangent line at x equals c, and the slope of that tangent line is the instantaneous rate of change at x equals c. So let's see an example of how this can be used. Find the derivative of f of x equals x squared at x equals three. So we're gonna apply the formal definition of a derivative at a point where c equals three. This gives us the limit as x goes to three of f of x minus f of three over x minus three. Now we substitute in f of x equals x squared and f of three, which is nine. And you can see when we plug in three to this limit, we get zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. That means we have algebra to do. So let's factor the numerator and cancel out the x minus threes in the numerator and denominator. And that leaves us with the limit as x goes to three of x plus three. Now we can solve. We can plug in three and we get six. In other words, f prime of three equals six. The derivative of x squared at x equals three equals six. Let's do another problem. Suppose you're given f of x equals five x squared minus seven x. Find f prime of four. In this case, c equals four. So now let's apply the formal definition of a derivative at a point. And this gives us the limit as x goes to four of f of x minus f of four over x minus four. Now we substitute f of x into the equation and f of four, and we get the limit as x goes to four of five x squared minus seven x minus 52 over x minus four. Again, if you plug in four to this limit, you're gonna get an indeterminate form. So now we have to do some algebra. In these problems, the term in the denominator must cancel out. So we know that x minus four has to be a factor of the numerator. So we can divide the numerator by x minus four. Let's use a trick from algebra, synthetic division. Since we're dividing by x minus four, four goes in the little box in the upper left, and then we write the coefficients, five, negative seven, negative 52. Step one, bring down the five, then multiply five times four. That gives us 20. Then add negative seven and 20, that gives us 13. Then multiply 13 times four, that gives us 52. And then add negative 52 plus 52, which equals zero. Now we have the quotient, five X plus 13. So now let's go back to our limit problem with a factor numerator. We have the limit as X goes to four of five X plus 13 times X minus four over X minus four. And we can cancel out the X minus fours. This leaves us with the limit as x goes to four of five x plus 13. Now we can plug in four to the limit and get our solution. And our solution is 33. In other words, f prime of four equals 33. So let's wrap up this video with a comparison of derivative forms. Remember, the formal definition of a derivative gives us an equation, but the formal definition of a derivative at a point gives us a value. But wait, you say, can't we just plug in C for X into the formal definition of a derivative and won't that give us a value? Yes, of course, you can do that as well. These forms of the formal definition of a derivative are just different ways of looking at the same idea. 
but you might have noticed that both methods require a lot of algebra, and this is very slow and can get very messy. There's gotta be a faster way, and there is. We're gonna discuss derivative shortcuts in a future video. For now, make sure you understand the content of this video because it's foundational knowledge for derivatives. And that's how you rock calculus.